Hello, welcome to the Flute 360 podcast, where we incorporate a panoramic view of flute related topics. I am your host, Heidi K. Begay, and this is episode three Essential Oils. In today's episode, I would like to share with you the benefits of essential oils. In addition to my lifestyle changes back in 2008-2009 with eating an anti-inflammatory diet and incorporating exercises such as the ones that Dr. Susan Fain had suggested, I started realizing the benefits of essential oils through friends and family members who were already using them on a daily basis. After I did a lot of research, I realized, wow, these essential oils have medicinal properties and they could essentially benefit me and the pain that I was experiencing. So some of us may be aware of what essential oils are, but in case you don't, I would like to refer to Dr. Axe's definition of what an essential oil is. He says... Essential oils are organic compounds extracted from plants with tremendous healing properties. Using essential oils for healing purposes is often called aromatherapy, which is a holistic treatment seeking to improve physical, mental, and emotional health. I think that definition really sums up well what essential oils are. And just a side note, his website is so easy to follow, has great tips. I love the pictures. They're very vibrant and colorful. And he also incorporates beautiful summaries of what each essential oil does, the benefits of a specific oil. So if you ever need something that is handy and easy to access, I would highly recommend Dr. Axe's website. So going back to essential oils, Basically, the process of obtaining these oils is a process called distillation. Other oils such as citrus fruits, such as grapefruit and lemon, go through a process called cold press. But most of the oils that we use go through this process called distillation. And basically, it's just a fancy word to say that they're taking gallons of this plant and pressing it down through this process to produce one small bottle of these oils. And because most of these oils are using the majority of the plant, you're getting all the benefits that that plant has to offer. For example, it takes 242,000 rose petals to distill approximately 5 milliliters of rose oil. That's a lot of petals. So with that being said, it's important to know that because this tells us the oil is very concentrated. And so a little goes a long way. But going back to the process, if you would like more information about the breakdown of how the oils are extracted from the plant and the different parts of the plant. So like the petals, the roots, the leaves, the stems, etc. A really great resource is the Handbook of Essential Oils, Science, Technology, and Applications, edited by Baser and Bouch Beyer. And I will definitely put a link in the website, the show notes, and the transcription for you to access that book easily. So as I was diving deep into my research about what essential oils are and the health benefits that they can offer, I realized that most of these oils have anti-inflammatory properties. And I kind of had this a little epiphany moment, you know, in my head I was saying, wow, this is, you know, ties back to the anti-inflammatory diet, you know, earlier in my journey that I had discovered breaks down the inflammation, helps get rid of those toxins so that your body can operate and feel better. There's connections there between, you know, the anti-inflammatory diet we discussed in episode two to now these anti-inflammatory essential oils in today's episode. So I think that's really neat. 
So the research shows that scientists are studying the compounds of the chemistry of these oils, and they're realizing that these oils have medicinal properties. And there's a slew amount of benefits of these oils. It helps with pain, such as inflammation. An example would be arthritis, tendonitis, headaches. And even some research is showing that essential oils can help prevent and or treat some cancers. And I mean, that's amazing. Other pains such as carpal tunnel, stomach aches, digestive issues, and the list goes on and on. So as flutists and musicians, I want to focus on two common injuries that we possibly can endure, and that's carpal tunnel and tendonitis. So most of you know what carpal tunnel is, and it basically is an overuse injury. So when we're using those small little muscles in our hands and our wrists, and we are going through this repetitive pattern of fingering on our flute, holding the flute the same way day in and day out, this is overusing those specific parts in the wrist. And the carpal tunnel syndrome is specifically towards the wrist and the hands. And because we're overusing this area of the body, it becomes inflamed. And there's that word again, inflammation. So we've got a full circle here. To reduce the inflammation of specifically the carpal tunnel syndrome, we want to use wintergreen and cypress essential oils. Now between the two, I love both of them, but I especially love cypress. It has this really clean smell and it's inviting. So I highly recommend cypress. Another common music-related injury is tendonitis. And we kind of touched briefly on that in episode one with Dr. Fain, but to dive into it just a little bit more, it's an inflammation of the tendons. Now, our tendons are found throughout our entire body and they are attached to our muscles and they help the muscles move. So without them, we wouldn't be able to walk, let alone play the flute. Just know that since the tendons are found throughout the entire body, you can have tendonitis pretty much anywhere, hips, knees, etc. But since we're flutists, I would like to focus on the parts of the body that is related to what we do. So we're looking at the shoulders, elbows, wrists, and hands. Some essential oils to help reduce the inflammation of these areas or any other part of the body where tendonitis might flare up. The essential oils that we're looking at here for tendonitis are cypress, frankincense, and peppermint oil. Now, I really appreciate the smell, and I'm really attracted to the smell of frankincense, but just note that it is a little bit more expensive than cypress and peppermint oil. Of those three, peppermint oil is definitely the cheapest, probably $8 for a smaller bottle, and cypress might run around like $12 or $13. However, frankincense, it can go all the way up to about like 25, 30 plus dollars. So just know that in advance. However, all three of them I use on a daily basis and I love the smells of all three of them. Now, if at nighttime, if you are going through pain currently and you can't sleep because the pain is so intense, you can use lavender oil to help with the insomnia. And lavender oil also reduces the pain too, reduces inflammation. So you can put that directly on the wrist. So when you go to the market and you see these essential oils, there's a lot to choose from and it could be overwhelming. But what you want to keep in mind is that you're looking for the label to say 100% pure grade organic oil. You want to avoid anything that's perfume based because basically these are man-made and we don't want that. We want to go straight to the source, to the plant to get all those medicinal properties. Some brands to consider, I haven't used all of these, but I've used some of them and I've researched all of these brands and they are highly recommended. So here's the list. Plant Life Essential Oils, Young Living Essential Oils, doTERRA, Eden's Garden, 
and Rocky Mountain Oils, just to name a few. Again, there's a lot of available companies out there. So those are just five or six companies that are highly recommended. One thing that as I was going through my journey of using these essential oils to help with my pain was I would buy these oils right off the bat thinking, okay, this is what's recommended. I'm going to buy it and be done with it. However, some of these oils, I didn't personally like the smell of that certain plant or flower or herb. So for example, I wanted to have energy. And so one oil that's recommended for that is geranium. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to buy geranium. It's a flower. Great. I'm going to love it. I didn't even test try it at the store. I didn't use the test trial that they offer and just unscrew the lid to get a whiff of it. I just bought it. And luckily for me, it wasn't that expensive, but it's basically sitting in my cabinet in my bathroom because I cannot stand the smell of it. I have a friend who really does not like the smell of lavender. And so he won't purchase it because it doesn't trigger his senses. So I would highly recommend just getting a whiff of that oil in the store before you purchase. Okay, so now that you've purchased your oil, before you dive in deep and start rubbing it all over your wrists or your shoulders or your elbows or wherever the pain may be, I would highly recommend to put just a tiny, tiny dab of oil on the back of your knee or the inside of your elbow or the inside of your wrist and wait a couple days and just make sure that you're not going to get a rash or your skin's irritated because, I mean, you don't want to rub it all down your arm and then have your whole arm break out in a rash. So that's the first thing I would recommend. Second, this is very important because these oils are highly concentrated. I would highly recommend using a carrier oil and this oil dilutes the essential oil and makes it less potent. And it's not that it's the essential oil is not going to do its job and it's not going to be medicinal. Like I said before, a little goes a long way. So You need to use a carrier oil, such as olive oil, coconut oil. There are so many oils out there that can be used as a carrier oil. Rosehip, almond oil, whatever is at your market that's convenient. For me, it's easiest to use coconut oil or olive oil because I cook with these on a daily basis. So that's just an option. And like I said before, you only need a few drops And then you can use a teaspoon of this carrier oil, say you chose coconut oil. So you get about a teaspoon of the coconut oil, put it on your wrist, and then just dab a couple essential oil drops into that oil. And then just take both of your wrists and just rub it in that area. And this way you don't have to get your hands messy with the coconut oil or with the essential oil. And this is an important thing to note because... You don't want to go and wash your hands right away because that defeats the purpose. It needs to be absorbed into your bloodstream so it can start working its magic. But if you do get some essential oil on your fingertips, I would recommend washing your hands because if you were to accidentally touch your eye or your face, it could burn and that's no fun. The other thing to keep in mind too is if you have pets at home, or young children or an infant, you want to make sure that because their skin is more sensitive than ours and you want to make sure that you don't irritate their skin. So make sure to wash your hands. The reason why these essential oils are are so magical and so amazing is because, again, it's coming from Mother Earth and Mother Earth is providing us with the resources to help us to stay healthy and energized and to boost our immune system to fight off disease and to prevent injury. So whether you're dealing with a certain medical 
condition currently or your mission is to prevent injury, in either case, essential oils can work for you. Same with the exercises and the anti-inflammatory diet talked about in episodes one and two. You don't have to be necessarily in pain to decide to take up this regimen. You could be feeling just fine and you want to ensure that you play your flute for a very long time. So if this is a preventative mission, go for it. But if you are unfortunately feeling pain and you are going through this right now and you are working with a physical therapist and a practitioner, then the essential oils, the diet, and the exercises can help you too. So no matter where you are in your journey of pain or no pain, these will essentially help you. So to kind of wrap up today's episode, when talking about, for instance, the cypress frankincense and peppermint oil for tendonitis, start off with one, you know, see how it works for just cypress. See if you like the smell, see how that makes you feel. And maybe in a couple of weeks, you can add the frankincense in to your regimen with the cypress. Now these oils, when they work individually, are little power balls. But when you put two together, they go into like overdrive and they're just like double the power. So you don't want to put a slew of, you know, essential oils on you like 10, 20, you know, you don't want to go totally crazy, but two is essentially better than one. So I thought that little tidbit was beneficial for me and the smells could complement each other. So you could wake up one morning and decide to do grapefruit oil with lemon oil because they're both part of the citrus family. Or if you wanted to go with the herb family, you could do rosemary and thyme together. Now you might smell like a big pizza, but that's okay. So I really wish you well in your journey with using these essential oils, if that is what you choose to do. I, on a personal note, when I started using these oils, I saw a huge difference in my wrists and my thumb areas. I had less pain. I had less tingling. There was less swelling. I was able to, like the muscle movement came back. And a lot of this research shows that um, these some of these essential oils can essentially repair nerve damage. I mean, that's how powerful these little oils are. So don't be fooled by, you know, these tiny little bottles because they really carry a big punch. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. I hope this information was beneficial to you. Just a quick disclaimer, the information regarding these essential oils in today's podcast are for educational purposes. So before you start any new regimen, please consult a medical practitioner If you are pregnant or nursing, it is highly recommended that you seek advice from a physician. Please visit HeidiKBegay.com for resource links, show notes, and transcriptions of today's episode. If you have further questions, feel free to email me at HeidiKBegay at gmail.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please go to the iTunes store to rate and review. Thank you. Let's talk about flute.